I liked science. Uh, it turns out I like many things, but, I, but it turns out that I think like a scientist. I think that's how I, I, I realized I couldn't be in some other field. In science, we just try to find out what the truth is, the truth that nature made, um, and what, you know, how things work, how they're made, and we do it with a logic, a logical approach. And I found that the other subjects I was interested in, and there were many, I mean, I liked English, I liked history, I liked languages, I liked, I mean, you name it, music, but, but there was a, the, the kind of scholarship you do in those fields is more inventive. You, you, you create an idea or a, a set of knowledge, and then you, you can argue with other people over whose idea is better. Whereas in science, you'd have the same creativity. You, you have to think of ideas and explanations. But the argument is simply one of carrying out experiments, and the experiments will tell you what the truth is. So it's, there's no... I don't know, it's not arbitrary, it's, it's, it's just there. And I thought that was fascinating. And I thought that physics was challenging, like many of my students think, probably. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, it was logical and clean. And, and you could figure everything out from the very basics. So I liked that a lot. And then I worked one summer in an astronomy observatory and did some actual research. And that was the, that was the thing that hooked me. I just thought that was so interesting, that you could, you know, collect a few photons from some really distant galaxy and figure out what it was made of and how big it was and uh, just I, that still amazes me. I mean I, lots of people helped me along the way for sure advisors and teachers and so on but um, but there weren't you know there weren't any role models in those days there were no women ahead of me as postdocs or young faculty or senior faculty that I felt any connection to that is, first of all, it's very rare to have a female professor in a physics class. And, and then none of them were like me at all. So I didn't see any, I really didn't see the path. And I always had a very short time horizon. And uh, when I talked to some of my colleagues, I remember this one guy, a postdoc, um, telling me that he had a five-year plan I thought, five-year plan? Isn't that kind of you know, overly organized? And I, I just I couldn't understand it. And I mentioned it to somebody, and he said, oh, that's a really good idea. You should have a five-year plan. But for me, I could never think five years out, because I couldn't imagine. You know, I knew what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to um, teach and do research in astrophysics. But I didn't see any way to do it. I just thought I'd just keep trying. And until somebody told me, no, maybe, you know, Maybe I'd be able to keep doing it. So black holes are just the coolest thing. Honestly, if, if you're on the airplane and the person next to you asks what you work on, and I say I work on black holes, it's always a conversation opener. I mean, they want to know more. They want to know how black holes work and so on. And actually, I had the same curiosity. How do they work? Are there really black holes out there? When I started my thesis research uh, as a graduate student, we didn't we knew about the possibility of black holes, and there were some suggestions that black holes probably powered some very strange astrophysical phenomena, jets that extend over millions of miles and, and, and have t huge amounts of energy in them, more energy than all the stars in the galaxy around it, etc. But we didn't really know that they were black holes. And in the 20 years since, We've been able to measure the masses and, and confine the sizes and figure out these actually are black holes and that something that until then had been a, you know, a mathematical formula in, in, in Einstein's equations now is a physical reality. So our nature, nature makes black holes. They exist and they exist in all kinds of masses and we're just starting to do a proper census of the black holes. That's something I'll talk about tonight. Um, to count them to see how many there are, how much mass they have, and so on. I, I just think that's fascinating. You know, you know, the whole question of what our universe is made of and how it came to be the way it is today, uh, I think it has always been the first question anybody asks. You know, how, why are, how do we get here? Where do we live? So it's just a slightly bigger context for that question. Well, first of all, there, 
they're, they're, we've got to get more women into physics. I mean, if you adopt the assumption that women are equal capable as men, which I, there's no evidence otherwise, then we're wasting half the brains if we don't have women in science. Not only that, but I've seen tons of young women who are really excited by physics, really love it, and really want to have a life in doing physics. And for one reason or another, they get discouraged, they get demoralized, whatever it is, they drop away more than men do. So I think it's critical that we figure out how to stop the brain drain in physics and how to improve our field by bringing in more different people with different ideas. Um, I, you, you asked me what's the reason for it. It's because it's a, cult, it's a cultural, it, physics has a culture like any profession and it tends to be of a kind that is not natural for women raised in, in United States society. So for example, one is supposed to be very elitist and always talking about how your stuff is better than the other guy's stuff. It's very competitive. Um, even though in the modern day, the size of some of the experiments requires huge cooperation, people still stress the competition. Did you do it or did you do it? And who's better, you or, or that guy? And so for women who are more comfortable in collaborative environments, who were raised not to brag, um, it's an uncomfortable culture. I, I know I used to feel very uncomfortable when people were talking about, you know, wow. how they were so good and somebody else was really not very good. It just made me cringe. Now I kind of laugh at it. I think it's very silly. But, but I have the seniority to be able to afford to laugh at it. And when you're a young person and you hear that, you think, you know, I can't possibly be that good. But it turns out that you're as good or better than these people who are talking. And, and it's very hard to sort of grow into that understanding that it's all kind of a game. It's all kind of a sports thing happening there where you're bluffing. And uh, you need to not take it so seriously. You need to laugh at it. But I'm not sure young people understand that. So physics has a, a sort of a difficult culture for many women. 